What's going on, everybody? It's Jeremy back again with another exploration. So today, we're about to explore this abandoned development out here in the middle of the Arizona desert. As always, I cannot wait to explore this place with you all. So without further ado, let's get into the story of why all of this is abandoned. Hidden within the expansive Arizona desert, just a hundred miles outside the vibrant lights of Las Vegas, a symbol of shattered aspirations and faded dreams stands alone. A modern day ghost town that began as a promise of luxurious life beneath the boundless western skies. The ambitious $1 billion project was approved in 2006 by the Mojave County Board of Supervisors, and soon construction was underway. However, an unexpected catastrophic event had different plans in mind. A catastrophe so large it left the county with no choice but to abandon the development just weeks before welcoming its first residents. Today, all that remains is six homes, grand in their design, yet haunting in their solitude, each standing as a monument to an unfulfilled vision. But what happened to this place? And why was it suddenly abandoned? What's left inside these forgotten luxury homes? And will they ever see new life? In this episode, I'm inviting you along an adventure that took me across America that led us to this forgotten place. Together, let's unravel the tale of ambition and downfall that's still written in the walls of this deserted neighborhood. This is the story of Silverado. Now, let's start from the very beginning. Out here in the desert, miles away from civilization, I didn't want to take any chances, so I parked my bike close by to have a quick getaway. Now I'm making my approach to the first house. I feel vulnerable, on high alert, but the pool of curiosity takes me inside the weathered structure. Okay, so this is the first house that we see coming onto the property from the road. And you can tell the weather's already gotten to it pretty good over the course of 15 years. No need to even step inside the doorway. We can just step right into this window frame. Wow. It's already clear this house has seen better days. Looters have found this place and nature has begun to reclaim it. But as we'll soon discover, not all the houses here have been hit this hard by decay. And you can tell scrappers have been here and they've pulled a lot of the copper wiring out of the walls. Yeah, this is very post-apocalyptic. And there's a lot of gravel in this room. If anyone knows why there would be a big mound of gravel, let me know in the comments below. Perhaps for plumbing for some reason? Yeah, so it looks like this house has definitely been hit by vandals. And just look at this view, guys. Those mountains way off in the distance. It's beautiful. I can see why someone would want to live out here. It's very secluded and really beautiful. Wow, look at this. So right here in front of us is where the TV would probably have gone. And then we have right here, a fireplace. The living room that once might have been warm and inviting is now just an empty husk. The potential to revive this home is long gone. Yet this doesn't diminish that unique beauty that's only found in abandoned places. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but way off in the distance, I hear coyotes howling. It's incredible. And it looks like perhaps maybe a homeless person has been here before. I can only assume that's why that shopping cart's here. 
I can still hear those coyotes howling. Man, you could tell this was a nice house at one point. It's crazy, they even installed all the fixtures. Like this house was almost completely constructed, ready to move in. Such a shame that it's sitting abandoned like this. Look, all the light bulbs are installed. A lot of glass at my feet here. And check it out, this was where the, uh, the jacuzzi would have gone. This big view right out into the neighborhood. There's probably a big bathroom closet right here, perhaps a shower. Now the toilet definitely right here. Yeah, these were nice modern homes. Like castles built on the shifting sands of an unsustainable economy, the plan for Silverado was to be a sprawling 5,000 acre haven of 113 luxury homes. Starlit barbecues, laughter echoing from the playgrounds, and the sound of golf balls being struck on an 18 hole course designed by the renowned Forrest Richardson. Along with that, schools, shopping centers, and a fire station were all a part of the blueprint master plan of the project. Needless to say, this was a massive development that would have transformed rural Mojave County and put it on the map as an economic powerhouse in the state of Arizona. We have probably a two car garage and it looks like a lot of people have been camping out here. I imagine as soon as these houses were abandoned, a lot of people came out here, partied, camped out. But I feel like they've definitely put a stop to that over the years. Look at this view, guys. This neighborhood here with all these mountains in the background. I mean, this was going to be a beautiful development. It's just wild. This is all just sitting abandoned, completely wasted away. All these resources just never gone to use. You can see quite a bit of graffiti on this one. But the other ones that I see so far, I don't see any graffiti on those. Let's say we go check out this other one across the street, make our way down and look at all of them. I like the style of this one. This very Spanish style architecture of this house. Again, we have another two or three car garage. I say this is like a three car garage. This is a pretty big one. And these houses were not small. They would be even considered mansions. All the light switches were installed. I mean, these houses were almost move in ready weeks from being completed. 18 days to be exact before these homes were set to swing open their doors for grand viewings, ready to greet the first wave of eager buyers into the neighborhood. And this is a massive living room. We have, a, again, another place for a TV, another cylindrical fireplace. And check out this back porch that's completely collapsed in. This was gonna be a huge, very fancy back patio. And now it's all falling in. I know I keep repeating myself, but like I said, this is very post-apocalyptic. More wiring hanging from the ceiling. I mean, people have definitely been out here stripping the copper from the walls, from the ceilings. And imagine this is a bedroom, a big walk-in closet there, and then we have a shared bathroom here. We got a stand-up shower here, with a nice view out the window. Look at this. You see the mountains way back there? It's beautiful. Definitely a jacuzzi was gonna go right here. Which by the way, I believe that the jacuzzi and all the appliances were installed. I think that people over the course of 15 years have looted it all. 
And to be quite honest, you kind of can't even blame them. Wow, this is a big house. This is a huge, huge living room. And again, I love the architecture out here. Nice use of circles, arches, and cylindrical designs. And imagine this right here was the master bedroom. It's a very large room. Again, this back porch that's completely collapsed in. And here's the master bath where a big jacuzzi was gonna go. Looks like they just stuffed this room with extra insulation. It's crazy to think that this was gonna be a massive development with like schools, a fire station, a clinic, and now it just looks like a war zone. Much like a war zone left in the aftermath of a conflict, this desolation tells the story of something many of us experienced firsthand. Only two years into its construction, an unexpected global catastrophe struck, and seemingly overnight, millions around the world were engulfed by its far-reaching consequences. In the late summer of 2008, the Silverado project ground to a sudden and screeching halt. The 2008 housing crisis, which no one saw coming, triggered a global economic recession, unraveling financial stability and security for millions. The crisis saw banks and investors swiftly pulling back their support as the real estate market collapsed, leading to a steep decline in property values and consumer confidence already teetering plunged into the abyss. The developers of Silverado, caught in the midst of this economic disaster, were confronted with a grim reality. Without the necessary funding and a market of potential buyers, continuing the development was financially impossible. They were left with no choice but to abandon the entire project. Its unfinished homes standing as eerie, silent reminders of the most severe economic downturn in recent history. I love this wraparound porch. So we're just gonna zigzag across the street and check out this other house. This, hands down, is my favorite one on the property. I mean, look at this thing. Yeah, if I was to live in the neighborhood, this would definitely be the one that I would move into. This looks like bullet holes. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's definitely all the way through. Looks like someone maybe shot from that direction. The bullets came out there. And look, there's more right here. Yeah, it looks like people have definitely been using this house as target practice. And again, a big living room as soon as you walk in the house with a big cylindrical fireplace. And guys, look at this back porch with these wooden beams. Like I said, very traditional style, Western house. This is beautiful. And all these materials have just gone to waste. And again, we got ceiling fans up top. It just goes to show you how close it was to this house being completed. We got a big bedroom here, possibly the master bedroom. The 
big bathroom here. Definitely a, a shower here. Again, another jacuzzi with this beautiful view. Look at this, guys. And I know it looks like plywood and nails at this point, but just use your imagination. You can tell this was going to be a really beautiful bathroom. And in a curious way, the decay itself transforms into a form of art here. And again, it looks like they stuffed this closet with uh, insulation as well. This is going to be a massive walk-in closet. This was definitely the master bedroom of this house. Got another bathroom here. Right before we enter a big garage. Guys, this is wild. And we might as well go check out this other house here. Since we're so close to it. And we got two more after this. Again, another three car garage. Stepping into this house, it's becoming clear to me that each of these homes, one after another, are beyond repair. Whole bathroom area here, with the bedroom back here. Now this is a big house. We got access to the patio back here from this bedroom. They're all just shells now, stripped down to their bare bones. But I can't help but wonder, are we gonna find at least one here that can still be salvaged? Let's go check out the living room. So all these houses have a common theme of a huge living room, a recessed entertainment center, and a cylindrical fireplace. And obviously a beautiful back patio overlooking the desert here with the mountains in the background. And all of them appear to be just as complete as one another. So this was definitely the master bedroom. And of course, I imagine we're gonna see the jacuzzi over here, yep. Place where jacuzzi was gonna go. Lots of lighting, big windows overlooking the desert. This is coming out into the front porch. I love like the pinkish tan color of this house. This one's really cool too. Again, Spanish style. I love the shingles on the roof. What do you call this type of shingles on the roof? That Spanish clay shingle. Let me know in the comments below. We got another house here across the street. The house that I parked my motorcycle behind. And I wonder what's up with all these tires out here. Maybe some people coming out here dumping their trash, perhaps. Oh, and this is really cool. Look how this front doorway is completely overgrown with all this brush. Really adds to the whole post-apocalyptic vibe. Okay, so the design of this house is quite different. And this is by far the largest house that we've explored so far. Looks like maybe a, an office room right here next to the front door. Maybe like a dining area here, possibly. And look how big this living room is. We have these tray style ceilings up here. This was going to be a nice mansion. And the fireplace is even bigger. Surprisingly, each house varies significantly from the last, suggesting that the developers aimed for a diverse community, catering to different tastes and income levels. This particular house appears to be from the more luxurious end of the spectrum. Looks like right here was probably the dining room. Maybe there was gonna be a kitchen or a bar right here. 
You can see where was, there's markings on the floor. Looks like there was water outlets. Perhaps the sink was right here. Maybe a dishwasher was gonna be in this corner right here where this pipe is. Yeah, this is a huge, huge living room. I love the open design of this house. And these arched doorways. Right here we got two bedrooms. Very large bedroom back here. It's got patio access back there. And then another large bedroom here as well, facing out the front of the house. We got a shared bathroom. Something about this desert view is just so magical. Beautiful out here, guys. And the air just feels so fresh. There's a constant breeze. Such a nice area to live in. We'll check out this back patio last because I need to take a water and food break here in a second. Looks like we got a big storage room here next to this huge garage. This is probably a four car garage. This is a big old garage. This is definitely the biggest house on the lot. And this is the master bedroom, which is the biggest master bedroom that we've seen so far with this big closet here. And again, a big bathroom. You could tell there was a, a big vanity that was gonna go right here and a big jacuzzi. Check this out, guys. You got this little curved arch, curved wall here. And imagine the toilet was gonna go right back here, tucked away in this little maze. We got a huge back porch with this big grand view, these mountains way off in the distance. Throughout this exploration, I've often wondered who was going to live here, what drew them to this corner of the world, and what were they searching for in their lives, or were they even searching at all? Did the desert promise them a sense of fulfillment or perhaps maybe even answers to the very questions I've been asking myself lately? So I've always had this deep curiosity about the lives of others. My channel has become this exploration into people's personal worlds, trying to understand why they up and left the places they once called home. But it's not just about the leaving, it's about the aftermath too the grief. But now I think it's time to share my own story of grief in the wake of the hardest year of my life, marked by the loss of my dad. It's been a journey of self-discovery for me to understand who I am now without the man who shaped me and coming to terms with the void that he's now left behind. When I lost him, I, I felt like I had to start all over again, questioning my place in the world. I didn't really know where to go other than south or east or north. I spent the entirety of this past year on my bike. Over 40,000 miles I rode. And you know what? I kind of disappeared into it. I felt everything more intensely. It was like I was invincible and vulnerable all at once. And during those days of such debilitating sadness, I truly think my bike was my salvation in so many ways. It became more than just a way to get around. It was a way to reclaim a sense of freedom and discover pockets of joy in what was otherwise the darkest time of my life. Three weeks ago, I hopped on my motorcycle and I rode across America. And the thing is, it's a journey that's gone far beyond just exploring landscapes and abandoned places. I've been all over the world, yet this trip has been the most profound one, taking me into the vastness of the desert. In the middle of nowhere, I've had the space to just be. 
I could think or not think or just feel. It's wild how much you learn about yourself when you're miles away from everything. And like the desert, life too has its barren stretches, its tough terrains, its harsh realities. And it's more or less all about survival. And being here, I, I've realized I'm a bit like that too. For most of this year, I've put this channel on the back burner to give myself space to travel, to breathe, to think, to sharpen my film and writing skills, but most importantly, to process the gravity of my loss. And I gotta say, this path of self-discovery has been life-changing. It's like a new beginning for me, inspiring a new passion in me to share my adventures that aren't just better, but more meaningful and deeply connected to the journey that we're all on. As the author Megan Devine put it so eloquently, some things cannot be fixed, but they can be carried. To me, what she's saying is that for each of us, there's a path forward in our despair. And for me, that path has been a long motorcycle ride through grief and not just around it. Now, back to exploring. So it looks like we only have one more house to check out. Let's go see what that one looks like. Look how massive my shadow looks. And this one's cool. It's got like almost like a turret entrance to the house. Ooh, I love this entrance. It's like cylindrical entrance. And there isn't like a, uh, there isn't an outlet for a chandelier up top either. Imagine it was just gonna have one light up there above the doorway. And this, my friends, is definitely the second largest house that we've been in. I mean, all of these houses have huge living rooms when you first walk in. I really love the open design of these places. We're gonna have a fireplace here next to the entertainment center. Perhaps right here was gonna be the kitchen, sort of like the house that we were just in. And again, a massive back patio. God. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I would love to live out here. This is, there's something so magical about the desert. And then the wind's starting to pick up. The sun's about to go down behind the horizon there. And it's gonna be a beautiful motorcycle ride out of here on into Las Vegas, baby. Walking throughout what was meant to be the Silverado community, it's now clear that this project has become a complete waste. The Mojave County Board of Supervisors recently voted against rezoning the land for commercial use, a decision swayed by local residents' concern of profit over the welfare of the community. This, along with the setbacks from the 2008 housing crisis, has cast a long shadow over Silverado's potential revival. The chances of it ever seeing the light of day are nearly impossible. And as for the houses, well, they'll likely be overtaken by the desert, slowly fading into the sands from which they arose. And with that said, it's time to get on my bike and head further west. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this exploration, give me a like, let me know what you thought in the comments below, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, stay off the beaten path. Mm -hmm.